I'm joined today by NAMPAC CEO Eric Smuts. The group has announced a big fall in interim earnings and its recovery prospects are now clouded by the COVID-19 pandemic, which is compounding weakness in already difficult markets. Greetings, Eric. Could you explain the impairments in Nigeria and Angola, uh, which have been a significant feature of this interim period? Yeah, so, so I think by, by far the, those are probably the most material uh, entries we had to put through. So I'm, I'm going to handle the two separately. First of all, Nigeria is a goodwill impairment. Uh, and that's when we bought that business for about $300 million uh, you know, many years ago, 230 million of that was goodwill. So a very significant portion of that investment was goodwill. Uh, and every year, of course, we have to reassess that to see whether there's a, a impairment indicator or not. And, and the last time we did it at the end of September last year, there was not an impairment indicator. So the question is, what is the, the big uh, shift? So there's, there's been a number of, of market conditions that actually resulted in an impairment. I think the first is, um, there's, there's overcapacity in the market. And as a result of that, that put pricing pressure uh, onto us that became more pronounced as a result of COVID-19 and the oil price. So, so that was 2.2 billion in, in uh, Nigeria of goodwill. And then we had also about an 800 million rand impairment of the assets in Angola. Now, clearly, the, the asset base in Angola is very different because we have two, two lines. Um, and again, because of constrained volumes resulting from both the, the well, it's a combination. So first of all, the, the lower oil prices put significant pressure on, on the currency. The currency was already under pressure. And as a result, we've seen consumer spending coming down dramatically because uh, wage inflation has not caught up with the, the exchange rate devaluation yet. Uh, and we expect that still to take some time, especially given that we're going through another cycle of low oil prices. And as a result, we, we had to look at the, the market uh, growth for the immediate uh, to medium term. And because we scaled back on that, uh, we had to impair the assets. So, so in both Angola and Nigeria, one of the, the things that, that come into an impairment model is the country risk, because that's reflected in, in your, your WAC rate that you, you use to, to discount your cash flows. And, and the models are extremely sensitive uh, to that. The moment you start uh, changing your required return, um, it's got an immediate impact on the on the models, and and that's really what what drove those uh, impairments. And then it looks like your debt also surged quite significantly during this uh, the latter half of the period. Are you in a sustainable position? You know, overall, I think our, our debt is is high. Um, it's not unsustainable, but I think it is unsustainable to keep it in US dollars. So, so that's why we want to restructure our debt, reduce our dependency on the US dollar side of it, and increase uh, uh, either local currency debt or more in rands to make sure that there's stronger alignment between uh, our results and, uh, and our debt levels. Uh, one of the features of the, the last year was that if you look at the, the average exchange rate during the year, which is used uh, you know, to translate into our results versus the mismatch of the spot rate at, well, in this case, the half year, that, that creates a, a big disconnect between, for, for, from a covenant point of view, between your results and, and the debt levels. Now, clearly, you know, the, uh, we got a lot of proceeds in from the sale of assets. All of that is gonna be used to, to reduce our US dollar debt. Um, it won't be enough yet. We, we're going to restructure further to reduce it. Um, but I think overall, uh, you know, the market is clearly concerned whether we can sustain the le level of debt we have. Uh, we've got 
very specific plans to, to address that. We will look at all different types of levers from self, uh, self-help measures in the business. Um, but we're looking at all the, the different structures and we want to make sure that we, you know, when we take a decision on how we, we restructure it, that, you know, we don't necessarily base all of that on a, a, a short-term reaction or a panic reaction to, to where we are right now. We, we assessing the business, the, the long-term sort of viability of the business and we'll make sure that we align our capital structure and the funding structure uh, to make sure it's sustainable. And what sort of self-help measures are you looking at? Okay, so that's everything. So so one of the significant themes that we're driving in the business is simplicity. So we want to simplify the business to make sure that we we remove some of those layers of cost that that is there due to complexity. So I think that there's a, first of all, we, we're reducing the number of sites from which we operate so that we can have better utilization of our overheads. Uh, we're also getting out of specific SKUs where, you know, it, it, the, the volumes are simply not adequate to, to give you a return on those. Um, and then we also reduce the, the number of people we have on those, uh, on, on the different businesses. Does it imply further non-core asset disposals? Uh, yes, I think there will be. Uh, th- we are not in a rush to dispose of anything immediately. So where we've got businesses where we believe it does, n- does not fit into the, the long-term strategy of the business, uh, we will first optimize them as much as possible and then find the appropriate timing to, to look at possible uh, uh, disposals of those business and of course the proceeds from that will then be used to to reduce our, our debt level and your regional diversification it will that be affected uh, yes it will so um, first of all you know at the moment we you know we we expanded out of South Africa into the rest of Africa we believe that cycle is now coming to a, to an end we, we won't diversify regionally more into Africa. I think we've got a very good fit, footprint there as it is. So the next level of, of uh, geographical diversification would be outside of Africa, but we will only do that once our balance sheet is strong enough to support that. And then COVID-19 is obviously weighing on your outlook and your ability to recover, but it's even affecting consumer patterns. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I think anybody that believes that they are immune to COVID-19 should, will be extremely naive. I, I think all businesses will go through an extreme uh, patch over the next couple of months to, to look at the, the reduced consumer spending. Um, some businesses obviously are exposed to structural changes in demand. Um, and, and I think the tourism industry is probably a, a very good example where they will only see demand coming back very late in the cycle. I think the nature of our products are such that we will see demand coming back quicker, but it is likely that there might be small changes in, in the structure of that demand, uh, and it might be good and bad. I think on the positive side, we do expect that, that uh, for instance, alcohol consumption, a, a bigger percentage of that would be home-based. And as a result, the, the nature of our products actually lend themselves better to home-based consumption. And there might, maybe we, we might see some upside, but I think um, only time will tell. But uh, yeah, I, I think all businesses will go through a very tough period of the next couple of months. And we're going to have to be very nimble in our decision-making to that we, we keep the negative impact as, uh, as little as possible. And what immediate actions have you taken to mitigate the risk? Okay, so, so we have already got an agreement with our labor union that they're going to have no salary increases this year. So that was due 1st of July, so that's not going to go through. We, we've uh, cut back on on salaries from you know executive and non-executive directors, we had a 30% reduction for the next three months. 
uh, and that's on down on a sliding scale to 15% to reduction for more junior ma uh, managers. Um, we have a policy, obviously, where everybody works from home as far as possible, but where we do not have either demand for our products or a, a particular service, people will be on annual leave, and once their leave uh, has been, uh, well, there's no more leave left, they will be on unpaid leave. Uh, in other words, similar to a, a temporary layoff, but at the same time, we will be giving them a 30% living allowance just to make sure that they can still feed themselves and so on. So I think on the one side, we're very lenient in terms of trying to uh, keep people going as far as possible. But at the same time, in order to, to uh, preserve cash and, and the sustainability of the company, unfortunately, we, we will have some temporary layoffs. And when do you think you'll be back at full capacity at some of your facilities? I must be honest, I think uh, that will be still many months to come. I, I hope that as we enter the next summer season that things will start normalizing. But I think it's fair to say that during the winter demand, which is normally when, when our demand is at its lowest anyway, uh, I think consumer uh, spending will be very constrained and uh, I'd, I'd, I'd be very surprised if the new normal sets in before we roll into summer. And then finally, Eric, what would you say are your priorities for the next six months? Okay, so, so we've been quite uh, clear on it that the, the first priority is, is settling dollar denominated debt. Uh, the, the next priority is on simplification of both our portfolio and the business. Uh, we've got a big optimization drive. And then the next one is to make sure that we get our capital and funding structure aligned with the, with the, the, the size of the business. Um, so so that, those are really the, the focus areas at the moment. Excellent, Eric. Thanks very much. It's a very difficult time and I hope you're able to navigate it. Absolutely. Thank you very much.